What is a better and cooler truck? Is it an old school 1997 7.3 liter Power Stroke Ford? Or a 24 valve Cummins, common rail? Dodge Ram. Dodge. Well, there's only one way to find out. We're it's, gonna put them to work today. It's to haul a lot of hay. So a Happy Yak Ranch has to feed the yaks all winter long. Yeah. And so Roger here is the man that I go to every year because he grows some great alfalfa. Okay. And we're gonna, you're gonna haul seven bales in my truck and I'm gonna haul seven bales in your truck. And then we'll find out what's better. All right, so I'm buying, I bought hay from this guy for three years. He bales it himself. He's got, what, 30 acres right now back. That's good alfalfa. My yaks love it in the middle of winter. So I'm getting 14 more bales. We're gonna put the truck to work. So what he's gonna do here is we're gonna take the ones on the bottom that already kinda have a flat spot, and we're gonna put them on the trailer first. So he, he took the nice round one off the top and he's gonna save that to put in the crevice of the two that are on the bottom. So he's grabbing one that's already flattened off. So this power stroke from 1997 is capable of going up to 11,000 pounds. It's got a fork and rear axle and a manual transmission, which kind of limits its maximum towing. extra heavy duty trailer. It's capable of a total payload of 11,350 pounds. So putting 7,000 pounds on it is child's play. Although it's really tall. Um, removable fenders. Let me secure the fender so we can get on the road. Needs now we're talking. Oh, like butter. Hey, look what Roger caught. I tightened that one up. I don't think we want to go down the road like that, Andre. <laughs> no, we don't have a lot of uh, much meat there, but it's not much meat. Good thing Roger's here to keep us yeah. honest. Seems like you have a system. This is the first time you're seeing this truck, right? Yeah, it's a little different than what I'm used to on the 7.3. What's what's this about? It's been a little bit modified. So it's a 97. Yeah. So the engine is original, but the turbocharger has been replaced. I see that. And then the previous one of the previous owners um, did an intercooler setup. So these pipes are going to the intercooler system. It still has a dual battery. It's got this air box here yeah. underneath the hood. Yeah, that doesn't bother me. And it has a small tuner. Uh, Does it? But we're not using really the tune. We're not drag racing today. We're pulling in stock mode. That's right. We're putting it to work. We're in work mode. So this, these trucks, from what I remember, they didn't have an intercooler until a new body style. Right. So this is an aftermarket. It is yeah. an aftermarket system. For or the some of these parts off of the newer version of the 7.3. Do you know? Well, not exactly sure exactly yeah. what intercooler they use, but you know the radiator stock. Uh, stock numbers are 225-ish horsepower and 450 pounds of torque. You got it. David, this truck was born with an automatic. Really? And then somebody converted it to a five-speed. Is that right? Yes. Cool. We're ready to go. You got your turbo boost gauge down there, and you've got your pyrometer right on the A-pillar. Okay. Well, this is my first drive. Not sure it's a good idea to be pulling 9,000 pounds first time I head in it. But, <laughs> but, but you've, you've had your share of trucks. I've had my share of towing. These, uh... Alright, you're clear on my side. Give it hell. Yeah, that clutch is like 
way out, all, almost all the way out, isn't it? And it's a, a little bit heavy, not too much. See, nice and easy. Yeah, gotta get used to that shifter. It's so right different. now we're in stock mode. So okay. it's supposed to be basically the same amount of fuel as a stock truck would have. So, so it is chipped, but it's not it's not turned It's not using it right now. At this point in yes. time. Yes. That's pretty good in low RPMs. Yeah. That's when you know if it's really got torque. When you put a load on it and you make your shift at 1000 RPM. All right, so have you driven many power strokes though? Never, that's why I'm excited about this. I have never driven a power stroke. Now, you know I had a an IDI. Yes, you yeah, did. Yeah, I yes, had you did. the previous version of this diesel. Yes. But I've never driven a power stroke, so this this is gonna be awesome. But yeah, first impressions are good. I mean, this an older truck. It's what, uh, 20, 26 years old. 26 years old. So here's your emer uh, emergency trailer brake brakes. Okay. So try, try it actually a little bit and see. Oh yeah, she works. They're there, right? Yep. Okay. Because I didn't want too much. Okay. Uh, yeah. But not too little as well. So we have brakes. Do we still have our hay? I hope Is so. it still there? It's still hanging back there. Okay. Well now the real test. We're going to need to merge on the highway. You got the brakes turned just right. That feels good. Okay. Yeah, we're going to pull on to 287 and uh, speed limit 60, 55 or 60. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, listen to that turbo. You can tell it's an aftermarket turbo. Yes. Sweet. I like that. And the gear shifter is at hand, it's really nice. Yeah, you know, my, my Dodge has a six-speed. And I like the six-speed when towing, but just for normal driving, I prefer a five-speed because they're a little further apart for when you're not pulling a load. Yeah. So what's your temp now? I mean, on the pyro. Well, let's, let's go to fifth gear and see what happens when we're pulling this. Not bad, I mean, it's... Gonna go to 800 right here. I'm pulling 50 miles an hour. 800, 850. So it's pretty healthy. Yeah, it's pretty healthy. Well, here's what I'm also trying to figure out. I'm used to brand new trucks. Yeah. And even 9,000 pounds for a half ton, a new one, would be within its realm. Yeah. You know, well within its capability. Your, your F-150 power boost could handle this load. Yeah. No problem. But, it might squat a little bit, but it yeah, handle it no problem. Yeah, definitely would squat. But here we are. This is kind of the pinnacle of heavy-duty F-250, yeah. right, for yeah. that year. And what do you think? I mean, do, do you feel this way behind you? Well, yeah. I mean, you do feel, in an older truck, you know you have a load, which with the new Cummins, when we went to uh, Arizona, yeah. and we were pulling Bahunka all the way yeah. to Arizona, I mean, sometimes you didn't even know it was I forgot I was towing for it, a while. It, it's for just a amazing yeah. how effortless it is towing. So, it's kind of good to actually feel the weight behind you. Because it reminds you what's going on. It reminds you, you've yeah. got a lot of weight that's going to be pushing you around. Okay, magically, bam. We're back. We're, we're near your wrench. Get close. Yes. So what are your impressions? I mean, you've had about half an hour behind the wheel now, right? Yeah, and a little bit in traffic and a little bit on the highway. Yeah. So confidence. You, you gain that, confidence? That's my word. That's my word. I feel confident in this truck. I feel like you got the power to pull whatever you want through town. I feel like you got the power to go up a hill. It feels my braking is really precise. Yeah. Uh, I love the sound of the motor. Pretty nice, huh? I did goose it off of a signal light in yes, town, and yes. I watched this uh, family was sitting at a at a cafe on the side, yeah. and I watched all the eyes turn towards me <laughs> when the turbo kicked in. Yeah, that was kind of fun. You know, same thing happened to me um, yesterday morning. I, there was a construction crew on the side of the road, and I just I, I wasn't goosing it either. No, I just kind of you know went by them and all their heads turned. So any Ford guy would know that sound. 
Yes. And they would turn their head immediately. Yeah, and their friends will follow, I guess. Exactly. It's so distinct. And well, now you're running at like 2,500 RPM. So this engine actually likes to rev a little bit higher, huh? It's what I found out, that it, it is happy when it hits 2,000 RPM, and it gets unhappy over three. Uh-oh. But, oh, a little road construction here. Oh, she wants us to go slowly. Gonna make me lose all my momentum here, gal. Oh, they're patching it. Uh, yeah, there's a hole in the road right there. See, this fella right. likes it. Yeah, so what, I was at 3,200 on my shift right there. Uh -huh. All right, then I shifted, I went down to 2,000. I'm pulling a hill. Your temp went to 1,000 degrees. You're pulling 25 PSI of boost. And I'm 3,000 RPM, I'm gonna shift. Goes down to 2,100. It loves being over 2,000 RPM. That's where it's happiest. That's it where seems. it's happy. Yeah. Which is going to be different when we get into the Cummins, right? Very. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, dude. It's fun to drive. It really is fun truck to drive. I'm so glad you brought it. Sweet. See, that's what you're saying. You can appreciate trucks for what they are. It doesn't have to be one brand, right, or something else. I've got some buddies that have had the 7.3, and, you know, they always brag about them. You know, and I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's good to argue sometimes. But not ever driving one, it, I couldn't I couldn't agree or disagree. Yeah. But now I can fully agree. <laughs> I do like this truck. Well, now let's unload. Okay. Um, and then let's run the Cummins. I'm anxious to hear what you have to say about my truck. Okay. I knew we were going to be in one piece, but I yeah. really wanted to hear your thoughts, and it sounds like you're pleased. Oh, very pleased. You know, I was uh, kind of, I know it has four tens in it. Yes. So you got to start out in first gear. You have to start out when you're just normally driving it? No, with empty, no load. Uh, second gear it's start second. is actually okay. Okay. It has bigger tires. Almost 33. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, you got to be in first gear, but once you pull the RPMs up and get going, it pulls awesome. Sweet. I love the sound of the turbo. All right, well, let's unload. Okay. Okay. Well, David, you make that look easy. You know, would... having the right equipment makes any job easy. That's and a I... Ford. It is a Ford, no <laughs> doubt. I couldn't live without that Ford. No way. But you have a lot of GMs <laughs> and other yeah, Cummins. Yeah, GM and Dodge, except for the one most utilitarian tool is a Ford. There I'll you go. I'll give you that. And a Bobcat. And a Bobcat, yeah. Can you show me your uh, uh, rock crawler? Yeah, my wrecker. It's yes. no longer a wrecker. You want to see it? Now it's rock wrecker. Last time I was here, this was months ago, you had an old G one ton tow truck, basically a wrecker body with a with a yep. winch on the a back. K30. And now now you took it down to the front. Did you shorten this, is, this frame? This is what's left. Yeah. So they had uh, they had put two feet in it. Okay. Okay, right here, you can see it. And then they had put a piece of uh, channel inside okay. of it. Okay. I, instead of cutting that out, I just cut three feet off the end. Was that the rear? Over yeah, there? yeah, I cut the spring perches, everything right okay. off the end. Okay. And shortened it, I moved the hanger, I moved the spring hanger up. I built my own spring hanger here. Uh, these springs are out of the GMT 400 that we, you helped me move out of here. Okay. That axle's out of the GMT 400. Okay. Uh, I built a truss for it. It'll get a locker eventually. So I got it all cleaned up. Then I took the Dana 60 out. It's going to get a locker. Okay. And so it's going to be dual locked, and you have a 
454, right? Yeah, so I'm going to rebuild it. And, and you're going to try to do it all yourself, right? I am. I Polish am. it, yep. I mean, surface it. Yep. Yep, lap the valves. I think I'm going to put uh, fuel injection, maybe like an Edelbrock Pro Flow 4 or something like that. Wow. Yeah. So stay tuned. Yeah. Can we have it on our off road channel when you get it done? Yeah. And it might be two or three years, but. <laughs> okay. Well, it won't be tomorrow. <laughs> won't be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's now time to switch trucks. And drivers. And drivers. So we've got to take the trailer, the Aluma, off of here and put it behind the Dodge Ram and load it up again. And we're going to see what you think of my little truck over here. Uh, it's not little. <laughs> Maybe not. It's, it's got a quad cap there. Nice. Dually. Dually. Yeah. 4,000 pound payload. Mm. A little more step forward an inch. Well, now it's time to take a look at this. Full in stock. 24 valves of freedom. Common rail. Yes. Cummins. Goodness. So, how much power is this? Oh, it says it on the block Does right it there. Really? 305 five. yeah this is the high output of that year 305 and 555 pound pound foot feet poundage torquage and 550 555 oh triple fives triple fives so what year is this you, you said oh three oh, this three? is the first year of the common rail this body style yeah. okay and i have the last year of the 73 power stroke obs yep and they're about five years apart, six but, years apart. But you have more power and you have dualies in the back. So what I like about this truck, Andre, uh, it may seem a little strange to a lot of the viewers, Yeah. but it's a two wheel drive truck. The reason I like that, and it's a dually. The reason I like that, it's really stable on the road, has no transfer case to go wrong. It has a manual transmission with no automatic transmission to go wrong. It is as simple as they get. And well, there's you, lots of space to work on it. Do you drive it at no, in the winter time? No. Oh. Because I have ten trucks. <laughs> Why would I drive a two-wheel drive truck? You know. That's this is good, my this is my hauling truck. Right that's here. a good way of doing it. Yep. Have multiple trucks. Yep. And this one has its purpose, and I typically just use it for that purpose. I don't think this is fair. <laughs> Why is that? Your truck seems like totally like next generation. I mean, the dash is more modern. It's a little bit quieter. It's, it's more powerful. It's a dually. It's, I could go on. I guess they're six years apart on these trucks. Yeah. I mean, six years can be a lot, but technology sometimes doesn't change for like square bodies for a dozen years. Right, or more. <laughs> or more, yeah. I gotta tell you, the transmission is different feeling. Yeah, so you're gonna find the shift points are gonna be way different than the five speed. They're closer, it seems. They're closer together. This is six speed. So it took me some time to get used to it because I've been driving an NB4500 all my whole life. Yeah. Because I bought a, one in 92 and I <laughs> yes. have, what, three or four other vehicles that that's what they have. Yes. So shift points, you're just gonna have to get used to it. And reverse is different. Instead of over and down, it's over and up. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It seems like, so my red line is closer to like 3200 RPM, where in the power stroke it was near 3700 RPM. So V8s tend to be higher revving, Red right? Higher. Yeah. 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 Okay. And this, this Cummins seems to be really happy, like probably below 2000. Yeah, so. That, that six gear is kind of hard to hit. It just straight. Oh, that's four. Oh, that's fourth. There you go. There you go. Now you're rolling. Now I can go across country. <laughs> I'm ready. Fifth gear is like fourth gear. Okay. It's, it's one to one. So one to one. Okay. Direct and, drive. And six gear is like fifth gear. They're both an overdrive and they're both the same. Okay. It's, gotcha. it's basically second, third, and fourth are kind of all different in there. 
they're shorter distance. Yeah, which makes sense. I mean, which gives you more options, um, different speeds. You can climb at different speeds, yep. right? Yep. So you can do all those Keep things. Keep your EGTs down if you need to. Uh, and you have a digital EGT gauge, so you also have a pyrometer. Yep. Pyrometer. How so do you say that? I put that on there pyro either way. I put that on there because my mechanic suggested that once you get over 200,000 miles, you really need to watch your EGTs because if you get one injector that goes bad, you're screwed. So, you're basically burning a, potentially a hole through your piston yeah, or something like yeah. that. You're going to melt a piston. Yeah. I see my EGTs can be as high as 1,300 on a really hard pull with a really big load. And you have a digital numeric gauge. I know it's exactly yeah. where it's at. Yeah. I don't like it when it gets up there, it, but it's only when I've got, you know, like a sail I'm pulling behind me or something, going up a hill, going 70 miles an hour. Okay. So I just saw 950 degrees, 1,000 degrees, yeah. 1,080, 1,150. You know what's scary is how fast it climbs. It does climb fast. Yeah. But then, you know, you kind of relax it and it goes back it goes to 800. Back yeah. And that kind of has to do with power, right? The more fuel you're feeding to it. I mean, this, I don't know if you can tell, this definitely has more horses than that fork does. Uh, yeah, and also closer gear spacing, it yeah. seems. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely like a next generation. You could yeah. kind of tell it's kind yeah. of the next level next level of that you know what the truck is closer to the power truck probably is cases Cummins because he's got a modified he's got a well he's also modified that's true <laughs> you know what's happening to me now I forgot I was towing oh did you <laughs> I just forgot <laughs> those dualies make you feel really stable yes I'll tell you that much <laughs> I hope I'm not losing bales <laughs> oh, <I'm left. laughs> all right we're hitting another torrential downpour Every day, it seems like it rains. <laughs> Every but, afternoon, we're getting like but, an inch of rain. But we're not complaining. No. Which means we have a lot of hay. <laughs> it is green, green, green. And it's really, really green, yeah. and our lakes are full. Yeah. Which is what we love. Yeah, for a boater. But you know what I'm learning after driving your truck for a while? As the rain increases... <laughs> what are you learning, Andre? I, I'm learning that this truck is easy to drive. Because it has a dually rear end, it feels like tremendously stable. Yeah. It's so stable. Yeah. Like, because you have a topper in the back, I couldn't see the trailer, I forgot it was towing. <laughs> and also, I'm near 1500 RPM the entire time. Yeah, and that's, the, that's the difference between the eight and the six. Yes, because it's a straight six, yeah. right? There's no pistons going against each other, right? In a way. Um, it's really well balanced, and that's what Cummins really has always been known for, right? Yeah. Like just low RPM. Yeah. It's really happy at lower RPMs. Um, the shift points are at a lower RPM than before. And I feel a little bit more calm. You know, I'm, it's a little bit quieter it also. Is. Yep. So I feel a little bit more calm, but still, like in the power stroke, like I was telling you, like I could feel my chest hair grow. <laughs> You know, you're revving it to like 3,000 uh, RPM. That turbo you, lights up. And yes. It, it's kind of screaming at you. But this has <laughs> similar feeling because I could also rev this higher, but it feels a little bit calmer. It does. Yeah. I, I would agree. We were confident in the power stroke, but we're calm in this one. Yes. Yeah. And both did the job just great. Yeah. Just amazing. This one feels a little different since, uh, simply because it's six speeds. So the shift points are different. Yeah, I feel like I have more choices, more options yeah. here. So, and I'm taking some of these canyons at higher speeds than I should. <laughs> I'm pretty top heavy here. Yeah, corner's pretty good. Though. Yeah. So I saw them, you know, your EGTs, I've seen about 1150 yep. today. And you said, and you said you've seen higher numbers too. Yeah, yeah, I regularly see it at 12 when I'm pulling. But you gotta be pulling hard at high speed. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get back and uh, get a summary. Well, 
I gotta say, David, your truck, the dually, did not squat as much, probably. No, hardly it, it was a little bit more stable. I do have airbags on it, too. Oh! Yeah. It just keeps getting more and more unfair. <laughs> so, in the beginning, I said, which is better? I really didn't mean that. <laughs> I just said, I just wanted to see, I just want to compare older diesels. Yeah. They're and both see how out they of that work. era. I mean, they're not anywhere near the trucks of today, but they still do the trick. They yeah. still move a lot of stuff. And had some heavy hauling. And I learned a lot because I could see the older power stroke working and its character, right? High revving yep. or higher, higher revving. Re yep. And uh, still the calm character of this Cummins. Yeah. And both are great. Yeah, I, I'd say, yeah, confidence in the Ford, calmness in the Dodge. And they both were fun to drive because they're both manuals. But how much was your Ram? Can you tell me? Well, you bought it, what, a year or two ago? Yeah, year and a half, year, no, about two years ago. Okay. So I bought it from my cousin. My cousin bought it new. So I knew exactly what I was buying. Okay. So, uh, you know, it, it was a good buy. Uh, it takes a hit because it's two wheel drive. It takes a hit because it's a dually. Not everybody wants a dually. Yeah. And it takes a hit because it's a manual, because not everybody wants to drive a manual. Was it more or less than 17000 It was $12,000. Woo! But those OBS Fords are really desirable. Yeah. People love those. They do love yeah. them. Yeah, I can see why they love them. Yeah. But me personally, I'll take the comments. All right. Well, there you have it. Let us know what you think in the comments below, and we'll see you next time when it stops raining. <laughs>